Hey guys and welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about how to put classes in a new file so that it makes your code much easier to manage. We want to keep each file really small and for instance we want to separate the monster class from main.cpp. We want to put it somewhere else and then we just want to include uh, the file up here at the top so we can use it. So what we're going to do is create a new class called monster.cpp and we're going to give it its own file and luckily Visual Studio will create the class file for us and so will CodeBlocks. I'll show you how to do both. In Visual Studio, all you have to do is come over here to the right to the tutorial videos or whatever the name of your solution is. Right click on it and then come down here to, let me zoom in, come down here to add, go away magnifier, and then we're going to add a class here right, right there. And then what we're going to do, let me zoom out, is name our class. So let's go ahead and click Add. We want to make sure it says C++ class here at the top. And then we just type in the name, and I'm going to call mine Monster. And that should be it. It'll create a header file and a CPP file. The header file is where all of your like prototypes and stuff go, and the C++ file is where you actually write the functions, like how we did the uh, prototypes on top of int main and then the actual definitions below main. That's pretty much the same thing. Prototypes, header, definitions, main.cpp, or monster.cpp. So let's go ahead and finish and that should create our class and it'll go ahead and add it to the project. If you look over here on the right, it added two files to our solution so you can click on those whenever you want. And it also added two tabs up here at the top. So first thing you wanna do is delete this little squiggly function right here. That's called the destructor. We're not gonna learn about the destructor today. We're only gonna be learning about this one right here which is called the constructor. So go ahead and delete the constructor from both the header file and then you'll see this squiggly function is also in the CPP file. So delete it there. Now if you're in code blocks, let me switch over. Uh, if you want to add a class here, you just go to File at the top left, and then New, and then Class. And that'll make a new class. So we'll name our class Monster right here, like before. And instead of having to delete the destructor by hand, you can just uncheck this Has Destructor, and it'll make sure it doesn't have one. And then just hit Create at the bottom, and Yes, add it to the current project. And hit OK. There we go. So now we added monster.h and monster.cpp. Now monster.h looks a little different in uh, code blocks than it does in monster, or sorry, in the tutorial videos over here, Visual Studio. And the reason they're different is because um, the Visual, Visual Studio has this pragma once directive, which basically does the same exact thing as this if def define end if. So just whichever one you're using, don't really worry about what that does right now. Just leave it in. You need it. It's important. And you'll notice also that monster over here in code blocks automatically made uh, protected and private. We've learned about both private and public. But we haven't learned about protected yet. You can go ahead and delete that. We're not going to quite learn what that one means. But that's the only other um, access uh, specifier that there is. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the code blocks version and just work on the uh, Visual Studio one. So here we have a function already made for us. They put it right here, monster. This is called a constructor. Now what the constructor is, is it's something that gets called whenever you very first, the very first time you make an object or any time you make an object. So if I make a monster here, I say monster, uh, monster one. This is going to call the constructor. Now I'm getting an error because main doesn't know what monster is. We have to include monster dot h up here at the top. Don't include the cpp file, you always include the header file. And whenever you're including a file that you made, you use, instead of the little uh, angle bracket thingies, you use quotation marks. So we're going to say quotation marks monster dot h. And now we can make a monster. So this is going to make a monster class, and what it's going to do is call the constructor. Now what the constructor is, is it's something that sort of like initializes our class. It can give it some initial values or something. Right now this monster uh, constructor doesn't do anything, but we can actually make it do something. Let's put a cout statement. We'll say cout, hello, yeah, sure. And we're going to do that, and that should print to the screen whenever we create our monster object. Now, we're getting an error here because cout is undefined. So let's go ahead and include iostream here at the top. You have to include it for each of your files, unless they include a file that includes iostream. So, for instance, if we had include iostream in monster.h, it would also work. 
But you want to try to keep all of your includes in monster.cpp, not monster.h. You want to try to keep your header files as small as possible. Because whenever your compiler is compiling your code, it's going to see this include monster.h, and it's going to basically copy-paste everything in monster.h into this file. Now, it doesn't need to copy-paste the stuff in here. This is, def this is the definition of the functions. All it needs to know is that the functions exist. So if we can keep this file really small, then our code will compile a little faster. But that's this, this stuff is... Oh gosh, I keep getting emails. This stuff is kind of like uh, not super important for your small applications, but it's just a good habit to get into. So we're including, where are we? Including IOStream, and then we also need using namespace std. I'm going to go ahead and put using namespace std in the header file because we're going to probably use some strings up here, namespace std, and we'll need that uh, for the strings. So, okay, now monster should see out hello. So, all right, let's go ahead and run it. Our monster, monster1, should see out hello. Let's actually make two monsters. We'll make a monster, monster1, and a monster, monster2. So monster1 is going to say hello, and monster2 is going to say hello as soon as they are created. So we will run it, and it will take a few seconds. There we go. I'm going to zoom in here, and you'll see it says hello twice, because both of our monsters were just born from their monster mommy or daddy or whatever, and they said hello to the world. And that's what we want. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. That's... We don't want them to say hello anymore. That's what the constructor does. And we can actually make arguments in the constructor. We can we can add parameters to it so that we can initialize it differently. So let's go ahead and give our monsters a name again. We're going to use a private variable, private, and then string name. And since we're making a string, we need to include string here at the top. Include string. There we go. So now we have a private variable name, which means main.cpp can't access it, which is what we want. And we could write a set name function, but when we do that, that sort of breaks the encapsulation of name. We want to try to avoid using getters and setters whenever we can. Instead, we should just make it so that whenever we create a monster, we tell him what his name is, and then his name never changes again. That kind of makes sense. Why would you need to change the name again? Later on, if for some reason we do need to change the name, we can write a setter function. But instead, what we can do is just whenever we give birth to a monster here in the main function, we assign him a name. So we pass it into his constructor. And remember, the syntax for the constructor is, I don't think I told you this yet, you just type the name of the class, and that's it. There's no type. So we don't say void monster. We just have the name. So let's go ahead and give it a parameter. Remember, we don't type void. It's just monster, in case you're doing this on your own. So what we're going to do is type string name, and we're going to pass in a name. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it down here. Remember, this is the definition. It needs to match what's in the header file. And you'll see this monster colon colon monster. It doesn't look like this. We actually have that extra monster colon colon. What this is doing is it's telling us that this function belongs to the monster class. Because if we have, let's write a new function. Let's write void print name. And this will print the name of our uh, monster. We'll put it in here. If we just say print name, even though we're including monster.h at the top, it doesn't know what class owns print name. It thinks this is just a completely different print name function than this. Because we could have multiple classes. We could have a dragon that has a print name. We could have monster that has a print name. We could have player that has print name. We need to tell it this print name is the monster's print name. So you type monster colon colon right before the actual name of the function and right after whatever the type of your function is. Now this print name is going to see out name in Dell, and that's all. And then this constructor right here, we never actually uh, assigned the name. We're going to say name equals name. So now anytime we make a monster, we have to give it a name. If we go back to main.cpp, we're going to get errors. If we mouse over, it says no default constructor exists for class monster. And that's, excuse me, that's because we changed the constructor to have this string name field. So whenever we want to call the constructor, we have to type parentheses uh, whenever we declare our object. You can only call the constructor one time in an object, and it only happens right at the beginning when you declare it. So the name we're going to give this one is Fred. And the name we're going to give this one is George. There we go. So we have two monsters named Fred and George. And let's actually change the cout statement to be a little my a little better. My name is, and then his name. 
So now what's great about our class right now is this string name is immutable, meaning we can't change it. That's what you want to try to do. You want to try to make it so that your private variables don't need to be really changed. Like sometimes you may need them to be changed, but if you can make it to where your monster class can manages all of the changing of the variables by itself, that's just really good. It's a really good programming practice and it'll make your code a lot better in the future. So let's go ahead and run this. It should print the monster's name. No, it shouldn't. We have to tell it to. We're going to print monster1's name. And to call a function, remember we just say monster1 dot and we'll say print name. And then monster2 dot print name. So this is going to print out two monsters. Now if we wanted to have like a hundred monsters or something, we could have an array. Remember uh, we learned about arrays. If we wanted a monster array, we could say monster monsters and then we could have like a hundred monsters or something like that. But the problem here is since we don't have a default constructor, this isn't going to work because we have to actually construct each one of these 100 monsters individually. And whenever you create an array, it tries to create them all at once. So if you wanted to do this, you would have to create another constructor. You can actually have multiple constructors. We'll say monster, monster, and then we have no parameters. This is your default constructor. This is what it was complaining to us about before. And then we need to copy this. Remember, it doesn't have a type. So all we do is type monster, colon, colon, monster. And now we have two constructors, and that's okay. As long as they have different parameters, they are basically different functions. And now this is going to let us make 100 monsters. However, these monsters don't have any names. Let's go ahead and initialize its name to name equals no name. So whenever we try to see out the name for one of these monsters in main right here, one of these 100 monsters or whatever, it's going to say he doesn't have a name. So what we're going to want to do is write a setter function later, like monsters, monsters, there's one, one, I can't type today, dot set name, something like that, so we could set the name. But just to illustrate that you can have both a default constructor and a uh, custom constructor, we're going to go ahead and print out one of these monsters too. So we actually have 102 monsters. Two of the monsters use constructors that we defined, and the other 100 monsters use the default constructor that we defined that just sets the name equal to no name. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say monsters, monsters, one. I don't know why I have so much trouble typing the word monsters. Dot print name. Dot print name. This is an embarrassing episode. Let's actually use the first monster, which is zero. All right, so we should get Fred, George, and then no name. All right, so, uh, mm. so my name is Fred. My name is George. My name is no name. And that's that. If we wanted to assign names to these 100 monsters, we would have to definitely uh, use like a set name variable. Later, we'll learn about a way to have an array of monsters that also doesn't have a default constructor. So we have to use this constructor. But right now, we don't know enough to actually be able to do that. So just know that you can have both a default constructor and a non-default constructor. It just depends on what you want to do. Thanks for joining me on this episode, guys. Next episode is our challenge episode. So you're going to take everything you've learned, classes, functions, all that, and make a really cool game. Thanks for joining me, guys.